All right, so one of my students uh, requested um, the review for the probability and uh, statistic. So I am just go ahead and lecture the introduction to probability and uh, statistic for you. So as you can use as your review. And I've also uh, given you a review exercise on uh, Excel, of course, uh, for your uh, statistic. Okay. So um, usually you're supposed to be taking an introduction to statistics as a requirement of your program, okay, a separate course. But of course, we also will reinforce you so to make sure that you actually get it because you need it, okay, in our field. So statistics, so we use we use it, okay, in the fields like economics, engineering, uh, engineering technology, our field. Of course, other science like uh, science, science field, like biology, yeah, medicine, social sciences, business, uh, for decision making and any kind of okay decision making processes, we are definitely on the uh, need uh, statistic. So, it's actually uh, it's mathematics. Okay, uh, it, it belongs to so statistics actually belongs to the mathematics. Uh, if you if you think about it, uh, but then we of course uh, use this for application we use in many different fields yeah um so stat is nothing but just numbers you know we study the numbers uh we collect we get this this uh data set or number sets by collecting samples yeah so the collection of samples analyze the sample interpret um and then you present and organize all that data and then we're going to make the decision out of that by looking at uh, these uh, numbers and patterns and things like that. So because it provides, you know, uh, your tools and the methods and you can make sense, okay, out of that data you, you have collected and analyzed. So you can draw conclusions and, and make decisions, okay, from it. So we have basically, we have uh, two two main types okay uh, in, in, instead one is uh, descriptive and the other one is inferential so descriptive is nothing but you just get you know you collect the data and then uh, you summarize and describe the data so meaning like you calculate uh, mean median all right mode your standard deviation and range our typical you know uh, stand uh, numbers and because by knowing the mean, median, mode, standard deviation, and range, okay, so these numbers help us understand the basic features of that data set. Yeah? And then we have this uh, inferential stats. So for inferential statistics, it involves like, uh, like using a sample of data to make uh, inferences or predictions yeah, about a larger or large okay, uh, population. Because you're taking sample, you know, a relatively small sample from a process, and you're gonna make a reasonable, reliable estimate, okay, of what that entire process looks like. So it's a, you have a population of the data, and then you collect, okay, some data out of it. So that's your sample, and then we're gonna use that sample and then just uh, and, and predict for the entire, you know, population uh, again. So some of this, so instead of studying, you know, every data point in our population, uh, you you gonna just study, you know, uh, a few samples out of it to cut cost, to cut time, okay? Uh, because studying the entire young population, it doesn't make sense, yeah. It's gonna cost you a lot of money and a lot of time to do that. Uh, so we just uh, take a little bit of sample out of a big population. And of course, we use different methods, you know, to be able to use a sample data to describe the population. So we use hypothesis testing, your confidence interval, you know, we already did a little bit about it. And of course, your regression analysis and things like that. So these are uh, powerful, you know, uh, methods and stat that we use so that our little sample can be able to describe the entire population, yeah? So that is your inferential uh, stat. So so if you ask me, oh, what is this, uh, what is statistic, and I'll just uh, explain that to you, okay, two major things going on. One is a study of the uh, collected data, and the other one is using a collected small sample data, and then I'll predict uh, for, for the uh, larger population where that sample come from, okay, and describe that. 
So that's uh, basically what st uh, stat is about. Yeah, we're gonna play with numbers. Of course, now so we're gonna apply the uh, statistic in our field. What are we doing? Yeah. So in our field, what we're doing is uh, we can use you know that sample data, and we can use the results of of that estimate. Okay, uh, coming from our sample data to predict whether the products produced will be within the specification. That's what we do anyway. Yeah. Or not, and what proportion of that products are likely to be out of specification, uh, and that is majority of uh, what you will be doing in your line in this program. Okay, of course there are many different application in different programs, but in this program you are uh, you are uh, yes studying right now, and that's basically what we're doing. You know, products and the specification. You're gonna use a stat. To estimate and to predict, of course, if your product is going to be within the specification interested, you know, specifications. So anyway, this is just a visual of how we uh, how we grew and organize and prepare and run the data, uh, you know, by using graphical methods like this, so that you can see, you know, if your data is within a normal distribution. This is your histogram, and you can see. You know, your data points are where they are, how they are, what they're doing, okay, things like that. So let's get into uh, into more, okay, you know, uh, stat. Okay, so uh, here is, we're going to start with a, a very, you know, long, uh, example. So here we have sample, taking the sample out of, out of the population. So we've got 50 sample of widgets, okay, we, we got it uh, from uh, three suppliers. So now this is your real world application. So you have a supplier A, B, and C, yeah? And their lengths are, we measured, okay? This widget lens. So 50 sample here, 50 sample here, and 50 sample right here, yeah? So how do you how do you know that's 50 by looking at the rows? Look at that, you know, you have like a one, two, and each row contains a five. So two rows is gonna count 10, yeah? So that's 20, 30, 40, and 50. So this is how we, uh, uh, rapidly, okay, uh, recognize uh, uh, where the numbers are, how many of them are, okay, how they're grouped. So we group it 50 for three groups, A, B, and C, yeah? And of course our target is uh, 100 millimeter. So if you look at your samples very carefully, you can see it's going like 199, sometimes go a little bit off of 100, okay? And then you have 99, around 100, you can see. Yeah? So our target is 100 millimeter. So that's where, this is what the, your, or, you know, like your target, what you want your products to be. But the reality of your products are like this, up and down around that, okay, uh, target points. So since you have three different suppliers, your decision is uh, which one am I going to use? Uh, uh, is this one reliable, that one reliable, or this one reliable? So that's what you're trying to, you know, okay, make a decision or conclusion out of it by looking at how they supply what you want. You want 100 millimeter that, that one supplier is giving you, you know, these uh, samples and the other uh, supplier is giving you that. And of course, some uh, supplier C is giving you this, okay? So if you eyeball it, you can see like you're getting a lot of 9 here, you're getting a lot of 100 here. You're getting kind of a mix between uh, 100 and 90, okay, range right here. So this is how we look at it. You don't even have to, you know, like look at each specific one of them. It's just like, just look okay, at it. If you're trained, just by looking at it, you know, like, uh, B is giving me a little bit lower than that, and C is giving me around and higher than that, and of course A is giving me a mixture of that, and you should be able to say that right away, okay? So anyway, um, your job is, in this issue, you know, you're going to compare the three suppliers and see which one is reliable, you know? And reliable people, we like it because uh, we like them because we can use, you know? and uh, your products will be based on what your supplier is giving you, yeah? So one method uh, that we are going to use in this example, we have, of course, various methods to analyze the data set. So this is our sample data set. Again, the sample come from a big population. So meaning your supplier is going to give you thousands and thousands of stuff. And out of that lot, okay, you take uh, 50, uh, 50 okay, samples out of it to study. 
Hello, what is this supply giving me? Let me uh, take a look at it and you uh, pull uh, 50 samples out of that. So that's basically what we're doing. So anyway, we have many different methods okay, to uh, study the data sets. And in this example, we're going to use a histogram to visualize. Yeah? So histogram is a graph. So you can be able to uh, draw that graph uh, by using these okay, numbers. And you can be able to see what's going on in that uh, histogram graphical representation of that data. Yeah? So the data is going to sort it in different ranges of sizes or bins. And these are just the terms that we call for the uh, data because you got to organize and prepare the data yeah, to be able to uh, see them uh, uh, where they all are. Meaning like if you have like 97, we're going to group all 97 in one box. If you have like 100, we're going to group all the 100 into one box. So that's basically what we're doing. Okay, put them in the bin. So the bins are just the ranges where we store the number of parts okay, that fall into that range. So let's, uh, of course, bin can be an exact number or bin also can be in this case is a range meaning like from 90 to 95 i'm going to put it in this bin from 96 to 100 i'm going to put it in that bin okay etc like this so anyway so we will group okay uh, all of the numbers on your sample for each of the supplier and into different boxes so let's take a look at it okay so anyway so the slides okay so uh, is prepared so if you see this yellow box it means like um uh, which okay which one to pay attention um and it's kind of like a reminder that i'm lecturing when you read it again you can go back and pinpoint all right these are little yellow boxes so you can understand what's going on so now we're going to put all of this number into different bins so our bins are here you can see yeah uh, we have 96 that many we have like a 90, 98, 99, 100, 101, 2, 3, okay, so and so. So we'll put all of the data that you collected from supplier A in this way. Supplier B, put it in there. Supplier C, we're going to put that in there, okay? So our bins are, um, in this example, okay, we, 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 we have a, we have a range from 95 to 105, okay? And everything that goes over and under is going over and under. We're gonna consider that as a layer, yeah? And of course, we're gonna find the mean, mean, like the average, okay? Out of all that, what is the average that this supplier is giving me? What is the average that this supplier is giving me? And what is the average that this supplier C is giving me that you can be able to see it, yeah? So, when you look at the supplier B, C, they're all in, mostly in 90s. Supplier A, mostly in uh, uh, 100. Yeah. Supply, sorry, supply C, mostly in 100. And supplier A, you have a mixture of 90 and 100. Okay. And of course, the mean for supply A is 100. The mean for supply B is also 100. And the supply C is also 100. However, if you want to choose supplier C, you're going to be getting more than 100, a lot of them, yeah? Supplier B, you're going to be getting uh, less than uh, 100, a lot of them. Supplier A, you're going to get a little on the 90 sides and a little on the uh, uh, 100 side, yeah? So, of course, and we calculate our average just like this. So, average is 100, 102, and then average is 98, okay? Um, so, this is our target is 100, okay? And that's what we wanted. So, and the the target of average and this is the actual you know actual average is 100 actual average for supply b is 98 and actual uh, um average for supplier c is uh, 102 in corresponding standard deviation yeah 1.49 1.39 and this is 2.12 okay so now I'll take a look at the suppliers and you can see the highest okay deviation is supplier C okay and the highest of course it, um, second highest is going to be supplier A and then lowest look at this is a supplier B okay so based on what you have just visualized based on this number you have to decide which supplier would you use and why and who would be your second choice and why you always need a second choice okay uh, because that's your backup. Yeah, sometimes we, we always have a plan A, B, and C. 
why do we always use three suppliers because if the first supplier cannot supply you're gonna all move on to the second one and then the third one like okay so uh, these are the method that we use in uh, running a business or doing your job yeah again I always tell you about backup backup and backup because without that um, yeah um, yeah difficult to uh, manage the processes yeah so what would you be what would be your second choice and why and what would you tell them to do before you would use them okay so these are the uh, uh, decisions that you have to do so right here your decision will be choosing one of this okay you can either go with this or this because it's kind of like um this one is a two point off of your target um see and this one is on the target and it's pretty good even though the standard deviation is about you know like uh 1.49 and this guy is a 1.39 okay um uh, but still it would be better that you choose a supplier a and a backup is your supply b yeah if you don't want your product to be so deviated you could go with that but i wouldn't compensate this because when you subtract, okay, 1.49 minus 1.39, uh, the, the, the difference right here is only 0 0.1, okay? Here you have uh, two points difference, yeah? So therefore, you're going to go with uh, supply A, and then uh, your backup second, second supplier is going to be B. All right, the next example here, and you have a supply A, B, C, D, and E, yeah? And of course, you have like a 54.5 millimeter, and that is your wedge is supposed to be okay, 54.5 millimeter long. But they're sending you that, and you histogram, you graph it, and you take a look at it, and you get their mean, and then your target is right here, your upper end. Uh, this supposed to be actually this is upper, and this is supposed to be lower. Okay, so uh, somebody made a mistake right here. Anyway, I just change it. Okay, so you have your upper and the lower, and then your target is right here. And you're gonna take a look at eyeball, okay, on uh, all of the histogram here. This guy, look at this. This is like way, way out, yeah. This one is also on, so you're gonna eliminate A and then B, and then uh, E right away. And then you have to battle, yeah, you know, this two. And none of them are actually good, by the way, because it's way off from 54.5, yeah? But then, of course, we're just going to go with the target, okay? Because um, what you got here is, is you know, like, um, most of them are, you know, around 50, between 51.4 and 51.6. So that's about 51.5, I would say, yeah? Uh, millimeter uh, in length. Of course, you need to... You're gonna need to look at okay which one is uh, within the uh, uh, the lower and the upper limit. There is out layer here. This is in okay. When you carefully look at it, is mean is around yeah less than fifty one point four, and this one is uh, uh it's the mean is a little bit okay uh, on the, on this side. Most of them are. So I would just say you know like um that um, your target, when you look at it, the target is a 51.4, you have a tendency to choose this too, okay, based on this specification. But then uh, your actual target is supposed to be 54.5, yeah? So what, what you are seeing, this target is a, is a forced target here for you, yeah? But that's just a different target than uh, what we're supposed to be, yeah? So uh, it's so far away, I would say like uh, if we change the target to 51.4, you're going to go, okay, either one of this, okay? And that I would say like it's better to go, if your true target is 54.5, you will go with this, yeah? Um, but then if your true target is 54.5, then supplier B, okay, is actually closer, you know, and uh, more, all, almost all of the data for the widgets to 54.5. So even if we have a, a very shifted, okay, mean or target here, um, your, okay, initial target is 54.5, so you could also go with this as well, yeah? 
So your first primary uh, choice would be supplier B if you don't use your shifted target like here. Yeah? So this question is a very, very uh, tricky one because uh, most of you is going to go in with, oh, am I supposed to be using the shifted target or am I supposed to be using the rear target? You know, what you actually want. So they're supposed to be uh, sending you a 54.5. So if we go with this without using the shifted target, then you would choose supplier B because almost all of them is closer to 54.5, you know, uh, all the samples. And um, if we use a shifted target, then your best all right, choice is going to be one of this, which I would go with supplier D, yeah? So tricky uh, question like this, all right? Uh, if this was a real world scenario, you have to talk to your supervisor or somebody above you. Hey, do you wanna just go with all our okay, first intention, uh, 54.5 millimeter long, or do we wanna use a shifted? Okay, shifted means you are uh, modifying okay, your, uh, your target with a new target. And that's up to whatever your company wants to do, yeah? So every time we take the sample and then uh, we visualize and we usually get uh, something like this kind of predictable histogram shape, okay? Most of the data set uh, usually display normal distribution like that. And that's why we call it normal because so every time you take the data and you draw the histogram and you got something like that, okay? And if you draw a curve, okay, through the data, you're gonna get a bell-shaped curve like this. And we call these shapes a normal distribution or Gaussian distribution. And, and this is a mathematical model, okay, that you can be able to uh, see with your eyes. So, um, some students have a confusion about the normal distribution and I don't know how they're understanding. It's just like very simple. So you take the data and then you, okay, you do your histogram and then you do your graph and it display like this, okay, it comes out like that. And most of the data set, like I said before, come, uh, gives you this type of histogram and that type of curve, okay, and it looks like a bell shape, so we call bell curve or normal distribution, pretty normal. You know, normal meaning like majority of the data set that you do from various okay environment to produce this type of shape okay so therefore we call it normal distribution or Gaussian or distribution sometimes okay some data set is going to give you this type of distribution distribution means how your data is okay are turn out or when you uh when you draw okay a curve uh, out of your histogram okay so sometimes it looks like this it doesn't look like the best you've seen like it's kind of like your tail is a little bit different because you have you see you know starting point is from here instead of a tail you know see that so it's kind of like going up like this so this kind of model right the mathematical model um, we got, you have to use a different, okay, uh, distribution because they're not normal distribution, you yeah? because they don't display a, our usual uh, symmetric bell shape histogram at all, it's displaying something else, yeah, so that way you have to deal with a different mathematical model for that. So when we talk about the mathematical model is, uh, your, um, your equations, okay, describing all this uh, data set. And here are the examples of other types of distributions that you can be able to see. So you have a cocky and you have a weibull, you have a chi-square, okay? Uh, so and so, you know, exponential. Then uh, you can see, look at the curve, you know? Curves are all different. Definitely not a bell-shaped normal curve, you know? They have their own uh, specific curves. So these are all your other types of distribution, okay? Of course, they have their own mathematical model. You know, this one is your F distribution. It's different from Weibo. Of course, your chi square, okay, is completely different uh, uh, from uh, Cocky, okay? So these are everything, okay, uh, different distribution that you need to know your whole distribution. And this one is your beta, okay, and this one is your poison. And that one is your gamma, of course, and this one are uh, exponential. Yeah? And I already told you the rest of the uh, distribution. But just pay attention how the distribution shape, okay, the curve, right? 
uh, they're all different. Exponential, you know, like going down, going up. Of course, they have two different sides, not only one side. Okay, you have the other way around as well. Um, all right, the next distribution. Look at this. How this histogram has like two peak. The first and then the second. The first and then the second. Yeah. So this type of distribution we call it a bi model a distribution histogram just because they have two different peaks yeah the first top and then the second top here so why are we having two different peaks is because you have two different groups yeah and these groups are totally different different groups mean they're unrelated okay unrelated data like you feel me okay and then this one is me they're definitely not related to each other and we're putting that to histogram all right in a same um, graph uh, for this side is you're collecting you know, different parts you know so the first part and then uh, the, the first uh, you're going to collect the parts let's say like okay uh, we can we can use this this uh, same uh, example here yeah so we have a first machine and then the second machine yeah and the parts is going to come off from the the first machine you have a first histogram the parts are going to come out from your second machine and you have the second histogram and we put uh, both histogram on the same okay uh, graph and you're going to have a bond model distribution histogram okay we uh, keep on taking samples and if your sample gets larger and larger your histogram is going to go smoother and smoother you know what i mean like approaching the normal distribution it will it will get uh something like the bell-shaped curve again and um actually the larger sample size is better you know because you can be able to use that uh, data right or your number or your statistic and then your mathematical model and use that mathematical model meaning equations use that equation to predict the variables of interest because every equation has them right uh, variables are in the equations and you can be able to use a mathematical calculation of that equation to get the variable of your interest yeah so that's what we call it predicting the behavior of the process and many processes, of course, if you increase the sample size, it's going to produce a bell-shaped histogram like that, yeah? Of course, for your program, uh, even though we have many different distributions, yeah, we're going to uh, concentrate on normal distribution and the student's T distribution because in manufacturing, yeah, uh, world, in our world, uh, you have uh, lots and lots and lots and lots of samples, yeah? So therefore, they usually produce a normal distribution and so uh, we will get into normal distribution and that is good for you because uh, you have to handle you know uh, the uh, same mathematical model to do your predictions with makes life very easy for you yeah okay we're going to take a twenty thousands okay twenty thousand parts as a sample um twenty thousands is nothing when you are manufacturing every day okay three ships a day and so that's a 24 by 7 manufacturer uh, producing parts. So if you think about parts, uh, there are many different kinds of uh, products uh, all over the world. If you think about just a look around your home, you have so many yeah, uh, things that you use, the things at the house, oh my gosh, the things at the office, if you think about it, oh my gosh, yeah. Manufacturing um, got to run a 24 by 7 operation to uh, provide the people of uh, whatever they want in their house and for themselves and also at the office everywhere in the world, yeah. So anyways, if you think about the product, 20,000 parts means nothing, okay, and that is your sample set. And of course, uh, you can see the X bar is your sample mean, okay, and you can throw it and you know, build your histogram and draw it and you're going to get something like this type of distribution distribution which is your normal distribution yeah so the mean here in this example calculated and it is a 200 millimeter and your standard deviation calculated from this data set is going to give you one millimeter yeah I already show you how to get the mean you're going to use the excel you're not, you're not going to use your calculator if you ever do that again on yeah I'm going to be uh, very very angry okay so use your uh, uh, excel and you can uh, quickly get your mean average and then you'll, you can quickly get the sample again sample standard deviation don't give me the population standard deviation some students are still doing population standard deviation it isn't population all right 20,000 parts is nothing it's just a sample yeah and that is your sample mean and your standard deviation is a one millimeter then we're going to uh, uh, provide okay, three different intervals out of that uh, 20,000 part sample. And um, 
Some people have a confusion. When you say like 20,000 parts over the week, you were thinking about the population. Don't do that, okay? And you uh, try to use a common sense, yeah? Common sense of uh, you are producing these parts almost every day, yeah? At the manufacturing uh, floor. So anyway, so here is interval A and then B and then the interval C. So which interval A, B, or C contains the most part? what you're trying to do is uh, you're trying to uh, find out the relative likelihood that these parts okay will, will be uh, a certain length or within a range of length and that's what we're trying to uh, understand and just um just throw a different interval it doesn't have to be like this you can throw around here as well and then we're going to see okay which uh, interval either a or b or c contains the most parts so how do we we see so when you look at it you know that this interval is is, is wider than that and wider than this interval yeah so a is wider than b and c so when we say wider we're thinking about the area of that section yeah so the area is is biggest here and then this and then this this seems like about the same yeah um so every time we compare the interval and thinking about you know like which interval has the most part we usually use the area of that interval so therefore this area is wider than this and that so therefore this interval a is going to contain the most part okay so this is the first uh, method that uh, you got to understand how to use the numbers and how to use every time we use a number and a visual graphical method you are playing with the area, okay, area, the width, the length, the dimensions, okay, your width, your length, your height, uh, everything that we are uh, using in order for us to uh, do some conclusion out of that data set. Then we're going to slowly take you into probability, you yeah? So probability is another part of mathematics, okay, and what we do is we measure, yeah? So probability meaning calculating probability, meaning that we are measuring the likelihood of an event, okay, uh, occurring or happening. So we are measuring the chance of an event happening or event, okay, occurring. So it is usually we use uh, uh, numbers, again, yeah? Zero to one for probability, uh, to express that measurement, yeah. So zero, zero means uh, your event is not going to happen. One means that uh, certainly it's going to happen. Between zero and one, okay, depends on the percentage between zero and one. So that's the percentage is it might happen or it might not, okay. So I draw it here for you. So you have a okay a zero. Your event is an likely, unlikely to happen. One. Okay, uh, certainly there's a chance that that event is going to happen. But if you have a number between 0 and 1, like 0 0.7, that means 70% chance, all right? And you've got that uh, uh, event uh, happening. So that's how we uh, calculate uh, probability, you know? So probability is nothing but another measurement. So what are we measuring? We're measuring the chance. Chance of something, okay, could happen or it could not. Or if it did happen, then how many percent, okay, could it happen? How many percent? Is it definitely one? Or is it 0.3 percent or 0. Point, okay, uh, sorry, like uh, 0. 0.3 means 30 percent or 0. 0.7 means uh, 70 percent, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete this uh, mess here. Of course, um, so in this example, okay, what you're doing uh, is... Uh, you're, you're thinking about if we reach into right uh, into uh, the total batch of parts and then grab a part at random so you go in there and take a take a part out of it meaning you're taking a sample out of the sample right population so which of the ranges above has the highest probability that the part selected came from that range okay and why so now students have a serious confusion between between the population and the sample, you gotta know this is sample, right? And we're taking another sample out of the sample. Uh, don't forget that, yeah? Uh, so if we reach into the total batch of parts, and then you're gonna grab a part random, right? Randomly, and you have to decide, okay, which of the ranges above this one, this one, or that one has the highest probability that the part selected came from that range, and then why? So this is the problem that we're trying to do. 
Of course, uh, I'm not going to show you uh, yes or how to do it uh, at this right slide. We're going to get into the probability because you haven't started any of the probability by now. So uh, what I'm introducing you is uh, how we apply probability, okay? Uh, measurement, measuring the chance, uh, something like this type of example. This is what we use, yeah? So in, to answer that, uh, you could say that like it, it will most likely come out from interval A, yeah? is because it contains the most parts uh, in, the, in this range, yes? So if you uh, take a part out of it, it will definitely come from here, yeah? It has the highest chance that part uh, will come out from this interval A. Why? Because uh, in the previous slide right here, we know that right interval A contains the most part because of the widest area it has all right in this range. So now let's go into our basic right probability. Okay, how are we gonna measure yeah probability? So here is a a, a very very okay a commonly used example which is your marbles and these marbles are in a box. All right, and you're gonna pick uh, something. Uh, you're gonna pick a model out of it. Yeah. So in the box, you have uh, you have five red, okay, and then you have three blue marbles. And you're gonna reach in in the box, and then you're gonna grab uh, a blue marble out of that box. And we wanna know, okay, uh, what is the measure of that chance of getting a blue out of this box? Yeah. If you grab a marble out of this box, then what is, what is the chance of getting a blue marble? So and that is the uh, probability that we want to measure. We want to measure the chance. We want to measure the chance of getting a blue marble out of the box. Okay, so how are we going to do is uh, we can predict it without even actually, okay, reach out and take it out. Yeah, we can predict it by using a mathematical all right, model. So here, first, we know that in, in total, okay, because your problem tells you there are five red and three blue, so therefore the total marbles in the box, eight of them. So therefore, there are eight different marbles right inside that you can grab. So uh, three of them are blue, it said it so here, and then five of them are red. So the odds are three chances out of eight, okay, getting a blue marble. So there are eight. The total chances, okay, of getting a marble is eight. The total chance of getting a blue marble is three because you only have three marbles. Yeah, so three out of eight. The total chances of getting a red marble is five because you have five out of eight. Okay, so five by eight and three by eight. Okay, so that is the probability. So let's calculate it and we're going to turn that into percentage. Yeah. So since you have a total of eight, every time you put your hand in in the box and pull one marble out. Uh, it can be blue and it can be it can be red. Okay, so and you will definitely get one of these marbles. Yeah, and so uh, since there are, there are only eight of them in there, so there are eight possible right outcomes. Uh, there are eight possible outcomes. The total possible outcomes. It can never be more than eight because you only have eight. It can never be less than eight because you have eight inside of the total yeah i mean inside of it, you have a total eight inside of the box so therefore you can get eight total all right a uh, total possible outcomes only eight okay and uh, out of eight you have three successful outcomes for blue if you're choosing blue yeah and you have a, a five successful outcome if you're choosing uh, red so that is all possible things that you can be able to right um, play with this uh, uh, this example. So eight total, three blue, five red. Now we're concentrating. Your problem is concentrating on getting a blue. So therefore, we have three successful outcome out of eight total possible outcome. Yeah. Uh, so therefore, your probability of getting a blue marble is three by eight. And that is, if you calculate it, you're going to get a 0 0.375. And you're going to turn that decimal into uh, into percentage. Every time you turn the decimal into percentage, okay, if you see uh, 0 0.375, all you have to just uh, um, multiply that by 100, okay, and you're going to get a 37.5, yeah, uh, percent. 
So I'm going to open an Excel here and I'll show you again. 3 divided by 8 is uh, going to give you that. Okay, and all you have to do is uh, multiply that, okay, um, with 100. Yeah, and that's going to give you uh, 37.5. So this is your percent and this is your decimal, right? Um, so all you have to do is multiply this with uh, 100 like that, okay, and you would definitely get uh, equals equals to this, okay? So that's so basically what you're going to do. Okay, now we're going to go back, all right, to our previous example, yeah? And this time, instead of uh, estimating by uh, eyeballing it, okay, we're going to uh, actually, okay, we're going to actually uh, calculate, yeah? I'm gonna go back here. So our problem is we're gonna reach and we're gonna grab a part out of, out of okay, uh, out of this data set randomly, and then you have to decide which range or which interval but has the highest probability that the part selected came from that range. Okay, so we're gonna uh, uh, calculate each one of them, and then we're gonna compare that probability and decide which one has the highest. Okay, so we're gonna start with interval A. Okay, so you have uh, in your bin, okay, uh, you have 20, yeah, uh, 20,000 uh, parts right there. And your interval, all right, range E has uh, uh, 1,900 parts, okay, in there. So your probability, okay, for interval A is going to be 1,900 divided by 20,000. And it's going to give you 0 0.095, and which is times okay 100 will give you 9.5 right a uh, percent so if you go to excel you can do for a okay uh like that so you have a uh, 19 yeah 100 and then divided by uh, 20 uh, thousand parts yeah and then you are going to multiply this okay into uh percentage so you get uh, 9.5 right, percent um, for A so that's your probability okay probability of A um, I would just um, go ahead P we usually use a P for the probability okay and uh, some people use rows it depends on whatever you want so that's your first probability and then we're going to do the same thing for yeah um, probability for the uh, B okay and we will calculate the same thing for B and then for C. So for B is 740 out of 20,000. And uh, for C is 444 out of 20,000. Okay. So let's do 740 yeah, uh, out of 20,000. Yeah? And that, of course, is going to give you, yes, times 100. Going to give you 3.7%. Yeah. And that is the probability of getting A, B, yeah? And then, of course, we will do the same thing, yeah, uh, for a, a C, yeah? C is 444 divided by 20,000, yeah? And that is going to give you this, and then times 100 will give you the percent, yeah? So, therefore, we eyeball it and say, like, oh, yeah, because this area is the biggest area, yeah? Oh, GGESD, big guest in area on the uh, graph, yeah. So this is on the graph, and we eyeball it, right? G R A P H graph. We eyeball it, and we say, yes, uh, you know, th th this this one gotta be, uh, gotta be the interval. Like every time you take a part, it's gotta come out from here. And of course, after we uh, yeah, uh, systematically calculate each. Yes, a probability here it is telling you the same, yeah. So this one is telling you the probability of uh, B is 3.7, C is 2.22, and then of course your probability of A is 9.5. Yeah, so if you want, if we want to have accuracy, you can usually uh, form the cell, yeah. Uh, go to the number and of course give it to like a four decimal, yeah. Um, so that gives you some more accurate way of writing it. So you have like a 9.5, yeah, 3.7, 2.22, so definitely 9.5 is the, yeah, it's the highest in the uh, probability. So the highest probability is, um, 
actually a okay so anyways this is how we calculate yeah so i want you to uh, do your excel like this uh every time you study yeah so that way we now clear that the part is going to come out from interval a yeah okay this is a counterpart so given lamb another histogram of lamb of uh, we have 1000 parts right here yeah and of course you also have a range a and a range b and the range c so let's take a look at it another example yeah and uh, 1000 parts and we're gonna do the range a has a uh, 35 parts range b 74 and 79 so let's calculate the probability see now we we're writing the same thing, yeah. So, so you have a probability range A, that means probability of A. You have 35 parts divided by 1000 is going to give you 0 0.035, yeah. Times 100 will give you 3.5, right? Percent range B, 74 parts, yeah. 74 chances of being in range B, 1000 chance in total. So we are going to get the probability of the range B, 74 divided by 1,000, is going to give you 0 0.074, and that is uh, times 100 will give you 7.4%. And this guy, 79, per, uh, 79 parts, right, out of 1,000 is going to give you probability of range, um, this got to be uh, C, okay, and somebody make a mistake here, let me change this for you. Okay, so this is range C. So that's a 79 out of 1,000 is 0 0.079 times 107.9%, yeah? Now we're gonna change the range. So um, if you have like 78 parts and 89.8 millimeter, all right, interval, bin is, is interval. So here this is a bin A, range A, bin B, range B, bin c is range uh, c now we're looking at 89.8 millimeter right so here you can see uh some uh the, the uh, uh lint right here yeah so we're going to choose the bin 89.8 millimeter okay and there are 78 parts in that bin so therefore 78 your total is 1000 parts right you divide 78 by 1000 you're going to get 0 0.078 times 100 you will get 7.8 percent yeah so uh, most students are familiar with this type of writing yeah? range a b c and this is what you're going to have outside yeah so in real, real world uh, scenario well, i'm going to give it to you they're going to say hey you know like uh what's the probability of getting 89.8 millimeter so then uh, you're going to find the total parts in 89.8 millimeter meaning this part has 89.8 okay, millimeter length so you gather all of that parts and divide it by your total batch yeah so and you will get the probability of that limb yeah out of that uh, same uh, yeah lot uh, which is uh, 1000 parts okay and so this is how we get the probability um it's not that bad right uh, i don't know why some people seems to have a fear of probability there's nothing really wrong with it it's actually very straightforward and simple yeah Maybe just some students don't like the wording of it, you know, wording chance, or they don't like likelihood, <laughs> possibility or probability, and they don't like that kind of, I think, terms, I think. But the calculation is very easy, you know, very, very simple. So the shape of the curve for uh, most of the, uh, right, the histogram is a bell shape. You know, so you have a bell-shaped curve and we call that normal distribution and why are we always getting the normal distribution is because most of the processes in the world are actually the sum of many smaller processes yeah so uh, if you uh, take the big data for these processes and graph it they usually come out like that so if, if a process is you know like uh, the sum of several other processes then overall process histogram is always going to show you the normal yeah, distribution. So in manufacturing yeah, uh, system, uh, all the processes are related to each other. So the, the process in a manufacturing system is nothing but the sum of 
other processes, right? Because they are interconnected to each other. So therefore, the histogram of the process that you pick inside of that uh, system is going to give you a normal distribution. Now you're gonna go back your uh, the famous uh, flipping the coin uh, example for this is uh, a commonly used uh, example for most of the probability yes, uh, courses. So you're gonna flip a single coin uh, one or times and make a histogram, and you're gonna get it would be a fifty percent hats and fifty percent tails because you have nothing but a head and tail on on, on a coin. Yeah, so a coin has a two different phases. And one is the head, and the other one is the tail. So if you think about, you know, what's the chance to get head? Is one head out of two, okay, faces? It's gonna be one by two. Is a fifty percent, yeah. So the same thing with the tail. You have a one tail surface, right? Uh, a small surface. I mean face. So one tail face out of two faces on a coin. So therefore one divided by two is going to give you 50%. You, know, you don't even have to do calculation in the Excel. You can do it in your head. You know? So you get a 50-50. So that's a flipping one coin produces a uniform distribution. You know? It is a uniform distribution because the two phases, the head and tail, are connected on the coin. You know, they are on each side of the coin. So therefore the process of getting a head out of the coin is completely right uh, connected to getting the tail out of the same coin yeah so therefore you get the normal distribution now we're going to choose the two coins even though we choose the two coins they are actually the sum of the processes anyway yeah uh, uh, because uh, you're going to flip the first coin and then you're going to flip the second coin and uh, you're going to do it at the same time yeah so the the uh, flip two coins at the same time so since you're doing it at the same time, you know, what you will be getting is the pro processes are again connected. Yeah? So uh, you will always get another uh, bell shape distribution for this type of data. So you can also repeat a bunch of times. Yeah? Uh, flipping the two coins at the same time, you're going to do it one time, two time, three time, four time, five time, a bunch of times. So this is a sum of two smaller processes in there, yeah? so one coin each. So the count of two hats is going to be 25. The count of two tails is going to be 25 because now you have two separate coins flipping at the same time. The count of one hat and one tail is going to be 50%. Yeah? So how are we going to do that? Uh, if you cannot do it in mind, you can all write it down. Yeah? Uh, so, so the first, all right, uh, why two hats is 25% is because you're summing it up. Yeah? So the first coin is going to give you, uh, you have uh, two okay, faces and your head is one face, so therefore 50%. Okay? okay, so for one head, okay, what we do here is uh, we uh, one divided by two because uh, one head out of two okay, faces is going to give you 0 0.5. This one is, we just uh, time, right? Uh, this. Uh, 100 and you get 50 percent yeah and i'm just gonna write a percent and of course for two hats right um what we have to do is just uh, the, uh, mathematically we calculate it by raising the power right two and it's going to give you 0 0.25 yeah and of course uh multiply that 100 it's going to give you 25 percent so this is how we calculate two two hats right uh, probability of two hats when you are flipping uh, two coins at the same time you yeah? i can also write this like uh, one divided by two that's a one head right and to the power two this two meaning line you have two coins okay each coin has a uh, uh, one divided by two, okay, and that's your probability. And then we raise uh, two times, meaning like you have two coins all together, so that's going to give you zero point two five. Yeah, so this is another way of uh, calculating, okay. Um, here is he, he is just showing you, oh, this is some of the two smaller processes of one coin each, okay. It's not very uh, uh, clear, right? And that's why some students have a confusion like that. Another way, okay, uh, that you can be able to do here, all right, I'm just uh, going to go ahead and, another way you can be able to do is, uh, since we have a two coins, yeah, a normal way of getting the probability of getting two hats is um, 
so the first coin got to show okay head and the second coin got to show head so you have uh, two heads and then two tail you yeah? know and you have four surfaces so there's only one time out of the four surfaces okay uh, two head can can happen and and therefore your probability is 0 0.25 okay that's another way uh, to do it okay there are many different ways to do it so um, if you can't be able to do it yeah in your head you can write it down so if you have two coins yeah the very first coin and the second coin okay so if you have head if the second coin get head you're gonna have two hats yeah if you have head if the second coin got a tail you're gonna get head and tail if you get a tail the second the second coin get a head you're gonna get all right tail and head if you get a tail on the first and the second coin is getting a tail you're gonna get a uh, tail by tail out of four right so this is um when you flip two coins at the same time this can happen uh, this can happen and that can happen and then this can happen and we call this advance okay um and so event one is you will get both heads event two you're going to get the first coin head the second coin tail event three you're going to get the first coin tail and the second coin head advent of four you're going to get the first coin tail and then the second coin tail all right and the, the, this is all your tour events right that can happen and this is a variation of the events that could happen right uh we also call that combination yeah different combinations uh, for the two uh let's just say c o i n s coins flipping at the same time okay so now let's go back to the second problem is one head and one tail yeah, what is the probability of that? So we can go, oh, I need one head and one tail, right? And a sequence doesn't matter. So it can be one head and one tail. So therefore, when you look at it, that can happen two times here. Yeah, so therefore, two divided by, of course, four is going to give you 50. Yeah, and you are going to multiply that with 100, and it's going to give you 50. Yeah. And the last problem is a two tail. Hey, how about getting two tail? Yeah, so you can do two tail can happen only one time. Yeah, so therefore uh, you're gonna write two tail. Yeah, if we go to regular uh, probability uh, calculation, can happen only one time out of four total events. Yeah, so therefore you're gonna get uh, zero point uh, two five. Yeah, and I can uh, multiply this with one hundred is going to give you percentage yeah so anyway uh, that, that is how we uh, calculate yeah so that is how we calculate um uh, system yeah that's fine okay so anyway yeah don't don't worry about this okay so anyways uh this is how we calculate yeah so I'm just going to give a precision to uh, two decimal. Uh, yeah, this is good enough. Okay, so this is how we we uh, measure the probability. Okay. All right. So let's go back to our lecture. Now we're gonna apply that to our our manufacturing yes, uh, system. So consider a machine cutting off parts at a specific length, but it has some variability, and every part is either 99 okay or 101 millimeter with equal probability. Meaning like uh, this 99 getting 99 millimeter probability of uh, getting 99 millimeter is 50 and getting 101 millimeter is 50 yeah and we made 10,000 bars and your histogram is gonna look like that and then we're gonna do a sub assembly and you have about 100 of these parts and to end sample at random it's just assembly we're doing the assembly randomly okay just take it out and we collected 100 of these parts so that uh, subgroup uh, length uh, could be anywhere 100, uh, okay, um, by 99 millimeter to 100 by 101 millimeter, okay, 
or nine uh ninety nine hundred millimeters to and uh ten thousand or one hundred millimeters yeah and some students have issue understanding like as soon as you write it they they lose a track of it so don't don't lose track of it okay uh very easy the land is ninety nine 100 parts so you're multiplying that and you get this the land is 101 you have 100 parts sampled so therefore when you multiply that you get this okay this is just a total yeah, yeah. okay now we want to find oh what is the odds that this is sub simply is 9900 so that's a 9900 millimeter so we're talking about 99 millimeter getting that okay um and right here yeah so every part picked at random is 99 millimeter. So I think the issue with a student uh, not understanding probability is uh, wording, you know, terms. Uh, you have issue uh, interpreting that. Um, ju just keep track of that, okay, what you're doing. We have 99, we have 101, 50, 50, okay, so that's your probability. And uh, we have one, uh, that's a 10,000 parts. And out of that, we're getting 100. So getting this 100 times is this in total length. And getting that 100 times is this in total length. So how, how about, you know, like, what are the odds the sub-sampling is going to be this? Meaning, like, uh, what about we pick randomly, usually 99 millimeter, yeah? So this is uh, how we talk uh, things or terms on uh, probability. So what are the odds that the sub-sampling will wind up uh, 10,000, okay? 100 millimeters so we're talking about every part you pick is randomly you pick is 100 hand and a one millimeter so don't lose track of what is your bin and what are you taking out yeah so that's all about your probability while we're giving you the marble boxes example is uh, that's exactly what the probability is doing you yeah? know all right so what is the most likely sub assembly limb uh, given that half of the bin of parts in inventory contains so 5,000 parts at 99 millimeter and 5,000 parts at 101 millimeter. The same thing, we're just increasing the parts. So you have instead of 100, and we have 5,000 parts at 99 millimeter, and we have 5,000 parts at 101 millimeter. And we want to know what is the most likely sub assembly length, okay? Um, and given, of course, of this condition. And don't forget to pay attention half of the bin of parts in inventory, yeah? It's gonna be that, meaning in the inventory. Yes, we have this and this, most of them are. And we didn't say all of the inventory, so half of the inventory, yes? Okay, so uh, make, uh, pay attention to every word that you read in your, in your, uh, in your uh, answer question. So we made thousands of these sub-assemblies, measure each sub-assembly, and make a histogram of many sub-assemblies, meaning like we're just drawing all these samples in the histogram, okay? And you gotta decide what is it gonna look like. So if you simplify it, just, we're just a, a trying to find you know, uh, 99 and then 101, and then of course, so this is a total thing, yeah? So let's see uh, how we're gonna answer that, yeah? So the very first thing is asking you, what are the odds that the sub-assembly will be uh, 9,900 millimeter. And you gotta pay attention to how many parts you're taking out. You're taking out only, you know, 100. See, that simply has only 100. So that's a 100 out of 10,000 parts. So therefore, right, uh, the odds, uh, the odds of the sub assembly is gonna be 9, uh, 9,900 millimeter is gonna be very low, yeah? So this too, okay, is uh, because of you have only 100 out of 10,000 parts. You have very few sub-assemblies are going to be exactly uh, 9,900 millimeters or, uh, yes, one of 100 millimeter, yeah? And of course, when you think about what's the most likely sub-assembly length, given that the half of the parts uh, in the bin we draw, right, from... Uh, are 99 millimeter and the other half are 101 millimeter. So most of the sub assembly is going to be around 10, uh, 100, right? Uh, 100, 100 millimeter. So that's a 10,000 millimeter, yeah? Making this the most uh, frequent, of course, uh, length. 
So if you want to know why it is very low, it's because the chance of subassembly, yeah, uh, being exactly being exactly uh, 9900 millimeter or 100 and 100 millimeter is very low, and that's because it requires uh, every single part in the subassembly to be either 99 millimeter or 101 millimeter, respectively, yeah. Because don't forget, yeah, uh, when you subassembly 100 parts, right? Uh, here we take 100, 100 of these parts uh, to form a subassembly. Then that subassembly link could range from a minimum of uh, you know not a uh, minimum of 9900 millimeter, yeah, if all 10 parts are uh, 99 millimeter to a maximum of 101 millimeter. Yeah, if all parts are 101 millimeter, but in reality, that doesn't happen. <laughs> it can be exact, uh, being exact at 99 millimeter or 101 millimeter for 100 parts is very rare. Yeah, uh, you because most assemblies is going to have a length somewhere between that two. Yes, uh, somewhere between uh, that two ranges in reality. So I think probability is hard because uh, student, yeah, you. You take a look at this, and in your brain, is you only get 99 and 101, and forget about it. Can be between that two, yeah. In reality, uh, it can't be always 99. If you go and take it out, can you always get 99? You can't. Can you always get 101? No, you can't. Right? Uh, you can get 99 to 101 and different lengths, different variations of lengths, yeah. Uh, when you are doing, a, especially here, we're doing a cutting, yeah, machine cutting of, of the parts. So the machine cannot cut parts at 99. It cannot cut parts at um, at a 101 exactly when you take it out. Yeah, it would be uh, in between them. So therefore, getting the exactly 99 and getting the exactly 101 millimeter is very low. Okay. So this is where you got to sit down and think. And don't forget, you're not always getting 99 and 101, yeah, for that uh, machine cutting the parts. You're getting in between them as well, yeah. Don't forget in between them, and this is the reason why it's very low, yeah. And it is also uh, you're getting only 100 out of 100, uh, a 10,000 part of this machine is cutting. Okay, so then the next one uh, right here is the most okay uh, likely subassembly length. Is going to be 100 millimeter, yeah, um, which happens uh, when half of the parts are 99 and the other half are 101 millimeter, yeah. That's pretty simple, and that is because if you take, yeah, you know, average of uh, 99, of course, I can just put 99, and then of course a plus uh, 101, right, and then divided by, of course, we have only two variations here. Um, you're gonna get 100, yeah. So therefore, uh, the most likely subassembly length is going to be 100. Okay, going to be 100, and then you times so uh, we're doing 100 parts out of it. So therefore, 10, all right? Uh, 100, 100 millimeter, which is 10,000 millimeters. Yeah. And don't confuse this with that. That is the parts. That the machine is total part of the machine is cutting. This is a length which is one hundred okay a millimeter times one hundred parts that you're taking out. Okay, so be be careful. Even though one little slide is giving you a lot of information here, then we get into the shape. Right, the shape of the uh, 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 of the histogram. The after we plotting the histogram. So when we make many sub assemblies and measure the lens, right? The histogram of sub assembly lens is going to be symmetry and bell shaped. Yeah, so I wrote it here symmetry and bell shaped. So that reflects the uh, uh, natural uh, variability in the lens. Yeah? So with most sub assemblies, you're going to have around like 10, uh, which is 100, 100 millimeter, which I wrote it right here. And fewer being at the extreme, which is this guy, right? And 9900 and 101, uh, 101, 100 millimeter. Yes. So this is too extreme, and that's your medium central tendency. So therefore, you're gonna have a symmetric bell shape curve when you draw that yeah, histogram. So how many subassembly will be? Uh, 9900 millimeters. So very few subassemblies is gonna be exactly. 
all right, 99, 100 millimeter or 101, okay, uh, millimeters, yeah. Since uh, 100, 100 millimeter is your center tendency, so this is going to be the most frequent, yeah, because most assemblies will be around 100, 100 millimeter, making this the most frequent length, okay. Uh, don't feel bad about the writing in a 9900 millimeter. That's just telling you 99 millimeter, uh, 100 parts. Yeah. So this is a 101 millimeter, 100 parts, and this one is 100 millimeters, 100 parts. Uh, showing you, you cannot get only this or this. You have things between that and all the things, including this two extreme. All right. Uh, make of the medium, uh, which is your average in this one, yeah? So make sure you study this example and try to try to see through the wording, you know, wordings are, uh, I don't know, I think it all depends on your brain, you know, I have no, no, no problem reading this, even though, yes, um, even though we read the same thing, our brain interpret, you know, in a very different ways. So um, if, you're, if your brain is interpreting in a very different way, just try to understand that um, understanding a scenario or, a, or a, a problem is very different from understanding the language, okay? It has nothing to do with the language. It has everything to do with understanding of the, understanding of the situations here and what, what is going on. So even though we read the same thing, um, People, yeah, some people ignore the fact that there are many different lands between 99 to 101. And if, and we have 100 data points right there of this, okay, these lands between not only these two. So these are, we know that that's a, that's a extreme, okay? And we have stuff, so I can draw a line for you if that's going to make it easier, yeah, for you. Um, well, where's my stuff? Probably do I draw this? Sometimes it's so hard to uh, I don't want this one. I'm just delete that. How do I do this? Okay. Oh my god, it's so hard to go and try to find a way to write it. Wait, okay, I I can't uh, seems to be getting this. So let's um, write it here. Yeah. So you have 99, okay, millimeter, and then you have 101 millimeter, and we are cutting 100 parts. Okay. And this is where we write it this way. Okay. Um, just writing is just bad. So this is millimeter, yeah? and that's a millimeter, yeah? and these are parts. Okay. I'm going to write that down for you. Okay, so when you take a 100, or when you cut, after cut, machine cutting, and you take a 100 parts, uh, and you check, all right? Uh, so your, your machine is going to cut, ding, 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 ding. And it can be 99, it can be something it can be whatever it can be but the range is minimum 99 this machine is cutting to all the way to 101 that is what it's talking about so you have a different lane in between that two and and the total parts that we're taking out is 100 so after machine cut it we take it out and that's all 100 parts okay 100 bars. So this is not written in your uh, in your problem. This is common sense. Your machine cut and you take it out. And you have to take it out in order for you to know uh, what is. At least you have to look at the machine. Okay, what is this cut part is? Yeah. So uh, there there is a some a sensor or something that is going to identify the length of these cut. Okay. So that is the range is between 99 to 101. So therefore, in 100 part, you're not getting only 99 and 101. You're getting 99 to 101, along with other, you know, parts or different measurements, okay? So when you take the average of that, okay, your central tendency, when you take the average of that, the mean turns out to be 100. 
okay and this is what we're saying times that is going to give you like this okay so uh, we add of course uh, okay zero zero at the end yeah so instead of reading 10,000 I usually read 100 hundred millimeter okay so then I know that I'm in 100 millimeter and getting 100 parts yeah and this one is 100 okay um, and one millimeter getting 100 parts so out of 100 parts having 101 exact millimeter that's okay have a it's gonna be low and that's also very low because the getting exact thing is very very low in probability yeah and mean, mean which is this guy you will be getting a lot of that yeah and of course we have some here and some here as well so anyway uh, that's exactly what this problem is talking about yeah so when you uh where's my stuff so when you draw the curve you you will definitely get uh, like this okay and which we call the the bell shape curve of course and when you apply a histogram you will definitely get something like that with the mean the highest and then go all the way low 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 to the uh, to extreme point okay and that's what we're talking about here yeah so getting 99 exact few 101 few back getting 100 and this will be the most frequent length all right okay so i think you you get the idea of it yeah so make sure that uh, you in your brain in my brain this is this is how my brain inside is thinking when i am reading this yeah so therefore you you have to you have to train train yourself to be able to see this in your mind when you read this okay all right so let's go to the next one so visualization you know histogram found a shape it's going to look like this and of course so here is our extreme and here is our extreme the low which is the high which is your lowest the uh, yeah so, uh lower lower limit and this was your uh, upper limit and this is your mean right here yeah and this is based on 100 parts that you're taking on okay what i'm going to do is uh, i am going to take a break yeah and let's make this a part one of your um, uh, uh, a statistic review and somebody asked me to review that's a lot of review but uh, of course I would provide that for you guys so you can be able to uh, review your uh, statistic you know and uh, we use it all the time in this uh, in this course so um, I'm going to record the second part you know uh, after taking taking a lunch break and yes yeah, so being a teacher is not very good because we're so tired you know and getting paid very low <laughs> So when you graduate, yeah, please uh, donate not to the school, to the teacher, you know? <laughs> because yeah, we sacrifice uh, a lot, you know? uh, we sacrifice money uh, for our students. Uh. So anyways, uh, let me pause, let me uh, stop right here, the first part, and I will come back and we will continue to the next part, which is your, uh, yes, uh, your, your dying example. All right, let's stop right here.